Hello, my lovely. Welcome to the Moving Toward Better podcast. I'm your host, Karen Bemis, and today we're talking about toxic productivity and how to avoid it, which may seem counterintuitive to what we've been talking about the past several weeks, but I assure you that I'll explain why we're doing this, and I think it'll make sense to you. What inspired this podcast was a song I listened to for the first time this week. It's a play off the song 9 to 5 with Dolly Parton and Pitbull. Links in the show notes if you want to listen to it. And while I love the song, some of the phrasing and the lyrics made me cringe because it almost glorifies working ourselves half to death, barely getting by, and overdoing everything in the pursuit of money. There's a line that talks about working 9 to 5 and then 5 to 9 which is what made me think about toxic productivity and why it's important to avoid it. Please do not misunderstand me. I know we need money to survive and thrive, and so many people struggle to get by these days. But if we spend all of our time working without ever taking time to do the things that bring us joy, life becomes even more difficult. So let's talk about that. The thing is that I teach productivity and I love being productive. But a huge part of why I love being productive is that it gives me the opportunity to be spontaneous too, because when I can focus for part of the time to get my work done, I get to play when I'm offered opportunities or if someone calls unexpectedly. It took me a long time to understand that consistent productivity in small amounts allowed for spontaneous, unexpected, and expected fun and joy, which I'm going to explain a little bit more about later. But the thing about productivity is that it gives every personality type the opportunity to do more of what they love, and that makes for happier human beings, and we could all use more of that. For those who are new to the podcast, when I talk about personalities, communication, and relationships, I use the DISC personality model of behavior and refer to people as D are driven, I are inspired, S are supportive, and C are cautious. You can find links to take your own personality assessment in the show notes. As we always do, we're starting with the D personality. And you are the personality that can experience toxic productivity by doing too dang much (laughs) and not knowing when to quit. Listen, I know how much you love being productive, and you're very good at it. But as they say, all work and no play makes Jill a dull girl. And you definitely don't want to be dull. You want to be a badass. But as much as you love being productive, you definitely have a point that your productivity excellence starts to wane. And that's usually when you get frustrated by the mistakes you or someone else is making, and it makes you want to say lots of bad words and hurt people. (laughs) I'm sure most of you know the story of the axe, but if you don't, let me just give you the cliff notes. There's a story of two lumberjacks, and their job is to chop wood with an axe into smaller pieces. One lumberjack disappears for an hour every day, and yet he's the one who always chops more wood. The other lumberjack is really frustrated by this and asks him, how in the world can you work less and accomplish more? And the first lumberjack says that every day he leaves to sharpen his ax so that he can be more productive. So for the D personality, that's a really good lesson to learn. Your version of sharpening your ax may look different and that's okay too. For some of my clients, they sharpen their ax by making sure they exercise every day. Some of my clients blast show tunes and sing while they do the dishes. I understand that you're not one to sit around and meditate, so I wouldn't ever recommend that for you, but I would definitely recommend that you inject some fun into the things that you do. And if you have a family, I would strongly recommend that you include them in the process and decision-making of what would be considered fun. Because I'm guessing if you have children, that at least one of them is going to need challenge, choices, and control just like you. So by giving them a little bit of that, you can build family bonds as well. The other thing about including your family is that you're not always the best at making family time because you think you have to be busy doing something all the time. And for many of you, that makes you really happy. 
So here are a few ways to do double duty that can work not only for you, but for other personality types as well for different reasons. If your children have homework, you could sit down with your laptop and work on something at the table at the same time your children are doing their homework. You can cook dinner while you help them with homework if that's something that you do rather than your partner. And I'm not saying any of this is your job. What I'm saying is that you can stack your to-do list, which can free up time later, and you love getting more done in less time every time. So get creative and have fun with being productive in every way so everyone enjoys the process, not just you. For the I personality, you're one of the most productivity challenged because if you don't like it or think it may take too long, you don't even want to start. And I know this because I am you. I don't want to do anything boring or tedious either. So how does toxic productivity show up for us? In one of two ways. Either we avoid it like the plague until we have to do it and then we're berating ourselves for procrastinating, or we only give it a half-hearted effort that takes us way longer than it needs to, and it frustrates us at the minimum and enrages us at the worst. In either case, the task doesn't get proper attention, and we end up feeling like a failure once again. Who wants that? Not me, and I'm guessing not you either. So your best bet is to keep the productivity healthy and effective. So you have to make it fun. Now, I know that the other personality types might roll their eyes and say that everything doesn't have to be fun, but for the I personality, kind of does. And here's where the task and the people-oriented folks, where they, where they diverge. And it's an important thing to understand. Task-oriented people can focus on the task and find satisfaction with just that. For those with a people orientation, relationships are more important. So an I personality can do hard tasks for the people they care about or with the people they care about. But if they have to go it alone, they need to gamify it at least a little bit to keep their interest and ensure that they'll actually get it done. For them, that could mean that they listen to fun music while they work or they body double in a co-working session or both. They may set up intermittent rewards for themselves because they work much better with the carrot than the stick. And that could be anything from a fun treat to a quick phone call with a friend. Yes, INS personalities still make phone calls. Or a new outfit if it's something that took them a lot of effort. They may even use timers to see how much they can accomplish in the time allotted. Or like me, set those timers to make sure that I stop and get to my conference on time (laughs) because as I was writing this, you know, working through my script here, I was in a hotel room with no distractions, which is a huge bonus for focus, but a huge risk without a timer because I can easily lose track of time and be late. It helps that I'm, you know, still on Eastern time and the conference was on Pacific time. And that way, you know, I had this morning window to get things accomplished which is my highest productivity time. And then I could go enjoy hanging out with some awesome people for the rest of the day. And then by the time we had our masquerade ball at 6 p.m., I was kind of exhausted. (laughs) And I opted out early because as much as I love people, even I have my limits. So, (laughs) and you know, I, I went to the masquerade ball, ducked out early because my feet were hurting and I was exhausted, but I had fun and I talked to some amazing people. So it was definitely worth going. So do you see how that works? Moving on to the S personality. You love being productive, but your toxic productivity or lack thereof comes from your struggle to set boundaries and enforce them. Having a fair amount of S in my personality mix While others may not understand, I most definitely understand that setting boundaries and enforcing them are two different activities for the S personality, and neither of them comes easily. Sometimes it seems simple because you have a task that needs doing, 
But every time you sit down to do it, someone interrupts you. You lose your train of thought and it takes you extra time to get back in the flow. Then after several attempts, being the supportive personality, you're just going to give up, especially if you're doing something for yourself and not for somebody else. On a good day, you reschedule and you try again later. On a bad day, that leads to resentment and passive aggressiveness and leaves the S personality's loved ones feeling hurt and angry and wondering what they did to deserve the unkind comments. Are they the people who interrupted? Yes. Do they deserve the blame for constantly interrupting when they should, and I put that in air quotes, no, not to interrupt? Possibly. But in most cases, if this is happening regularly, you as the supportive personality have only hinted at what you want rather than stating it outright because it feels harsh to say what you want to say out loud, which is to be left alone for a while to get done what you want to do. And that's a difficult boundary for you. Look, there's several ways to deal with this. And I definitely get a lot of pushback from mass personalities because these are extremely difficult for them at first. For those with different personalities, please know that if your normally accommodating S person is asking for something directly, it took a lot of courage for them to do so. If you are an S personality, be brave and ask for what you want several times if you need to and put things into place to remind your loved ones of the boundary you just set. It isn't being mean to reinforce that boundary. It is actually a kindness to yourself and others because if your people are trained to respect you and your boundaries, they'll be more likely to respect the boundaries of others too. So this is a service to them as well as yourself. A couple of conferences I attended gave us door hangers to put on our office that said things like blogging in progress. Please do not disturb unless you have coffee. (laughs) I don't drink coffee, so I changed mine to tea. I also have one that says, shh, I'm in the process of learning. And just seeing one of those on the door signaled my family that while they could enter, while I was working, I would prefer if the conversation that they wanted to have could wait. It wasn't a guarantee that that wouldn't happen, but it definitely helped. And what's really cool is that these things are so easy to make for yourself with some cardboard and Canva, or you can get one from Amazon if you want to buy one. I've actually included a link to a dry erase version in the show notes so that you can write whatever you want and it even lights up, so (laughs) makes an even bigger impact. If you're the creative type, you might even have fun with whatever catchy phrase you want to put on it for the day to make, that'll make your heart happy. And, you know, one of the other things I talk to supportive people about is leaving the house or getting help in the house when they want to work. And I know that's difficult for them because if they're committed to being a mom, they can experience, they can experience a lot of guilt with these two options. So. We reframe that guilt. First, I remind them that because most of them don't spend money on themselves or take time for themselves other than an occasional haircut, if they don't do it themselves, and yes, that is definitely a thing for the yes personality mom, that using some of their time to work on their business will make them a mentally and emotionally more available parent for their family when they're finished. You see, the S personality goes through a lot of mental gymnastics to make sure that everyone is taken care of. But if they don't allow themselves some time to walk away from that and recharge, they dull their acts. And they become a very resentful person who wants to help everyone, but they get stuck in feeling like no one cares about their needs at all. This little short trip away from the house can turn that around in a shorter time than you think. If that holds zero appeal to you, as an S personality, I always suggest a mother's helper in the house to lighten the load and give some space so that you can get done what you want to get done without the stress of being solely responsible for the family while while you're trying to work. 
most of the time, the kiddos love having a mother's helper. And if you hire a younger person, it's like they have a new playmate. A mother's helper is usually much more cost effective than daycare, and you're still there if they need you. Isn't that great? And while I know that several supportive moms feel like that's a failing in some way, I assure you it isn't. Not long ago, even middle-class mothers who didn't have businesses hired teens to help with the children so that they could run errands, go shopping, or they hired housekeepers to do the work around the house so they could spend more time doing what they wanted to do, like sew and read and hang out with their kids. So it's not like we're breaking new ground here. We're actually revisiting a tried and true way of getting help with our families. The truth is, that the supportive women I know that are online entrepreneurs or even those that have jobs outside the house often struggle the most with guilt. But when they can create these small wins for themselves, they give everyone permission to grow and have a better life. And isn't that what we want if we have families? I certainly think so. And lastly, let's talk about the cautious personality because whether you believe it or not, you might be the personality that most easily falls into the toxic productivity trap. Why? Because you always think you can do better. (laughs) And you don't want to let go of anything until it's perfect. So let's figure out what's enough and what's too much and whether it's toxic for you. For example, If you're my surgeon, (laughs) I definitely want your perfectionistic tendencies to shine through and for you to be totally focused until you finish the job and finish it perfectly because my life depends on it. But if you're trying to run a business out of your home and raise a family, you might not need to clean, vacuum, and spend hours on the house every single day and then lose sleep so you can do your work and take care of your family too. One of the great lessons here, and one that I discuss with my husband regularly because he has that C personality type, is what are things truly costing? He definitely struggles with paying for things. He knows he could do himself and could probably do better than the people we're paying. And that's not to criticize him or the people that we hire. It's merely because my husband is methodical and particular. And his work is impeccable, but his time is valuable and sometimes scarce for the jobs that need to be done around the house, especially when he's traveling for work. So we hire some things out and it makes life so much easier. We've hired companies to weed and mulch our front garden, to fix our fence, to replace our garage windows, all of which my husband could do. But by paying someone else to do it, we free his time to make more money and have a life because if he tried to do everything, we would both be working all the time. And some of that stuff is just not fun for us, nor does it make sense for us to do it ourselves when we can make more per hour than the than paying the people that we hire. So essentially it's a win-win situation because we get the thing done that we want done and those people get to make money. So everybody wins. Yay. You see, when a C personality can do that, It's really a double win for them because not only are they free to do more of what they want, they're letting go of perfectionism that can be as destructive as it is motivating. And here's the best part. Even if you feel the need to neaten up or put finishing touches on something you've hired someone to do, they've still done the bulk of the work and you're bringing it up to your high standards with much less effort. And that is a beautiful thing. So there you have it, each brand of productivity toxicity and how to work through it. I hope something in this podcast will help you or someone you love live a happier, healthier life. And if you'd like to dive further into this idea, check out the Productivity by Personality mini course that you can get today for only $27. Prices may be going up soon, so check it out and see what it can do for you. That way, you can enjoy your life and your business more than you ever have before. So if you want the inside scoop and access to all the resources that are coming up, make sure you go to the Moving Toward Better 
homepage and join the email list. You're going to get that and a whole lot more. Now, if you have a specific productivity question, book a free 15 minute discovery call and we can get you on the track to better immediately. You can do that and sign up for the email community right there on the Moving Toward Better homepage. As always, if you like what you've heard, please share and subscribe. Until next time, keep moving toward better, whatever that looks like for you. Love you all. At Moving Toward Better, it's our mission to help you unlock a fantastic life powered by what's unique and authentically you. To learn how we can help you in your quest, head over to movingtowardbetter.com to check it out or use the links in the show notes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being you and have a great day. Love you all.